All right, solving systems by substitution. First step, isolate one variable and one equation. So make sure one equation has one variable by, its, variable by itself. We're gonna plug this expression into the other equation. We're gonna solve the equation we have left now. We only have one variable in it. Then just like elimination, we're gonna use that value to solve for the other variable and we can always check our solutions. So, in number one, we don't need to isolate one variable in one equation because we already have one here. X is already by itself. So we're gonna take what X is equal to and substitute it in for the X. So our new equation would be two times three Y minus four plus three Y, because that was right here, equals 19. Now that we only have y's, we're, we can solve. We're going to distribute the 2, bring down the rest, combine like terms, add the 8 to both sides, and then divide by 9. So we get that y equals 3. Now we're going to take that and plug it back into the original equation because that already says x equals. So x equals 3 times 3 minus 4. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 minus 4 is 5. So our solution is 5. number two, both our equations are y equals. So we're going to take what y equals and plug it in for y. So 5x plus 3 is equal to 2x minus 9. Let's get our x's on one side. Subtract 3 from both sides. divide both sides by 3. Now we're going to go back and find out what y equals. You can choose either equation to plug it into since they both say y equals. I'll use the top one. 5 times 2 plus 3. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 3. y equals 13. So our solution is 2, 13. Rewind, I messed up. Let's go all the way back. My bad. Not perfect. Sorry. It's negative 9 here. So it should be negative 9 there. Subtract 3. 3x equals negative 12. Divide both sides by 3. X equals negative 4. So 5, sorry, Y equals 5 times negative 4 plus 3. 5 times negative 4 is negative 20 plus 3. Y equals negative 17. That's the real answer. See, negatives are very important. Don't forget them. All right, now this one isn't written as x equals or y equals already, but it's pretty easy to rearrange this equation over here. I don't like having negative x's, so I'm going to add x to both sides, and that would give me y equals 3 plus x. So I'm going to take that and plug it in for y in my other equation. Negative 3x plus 3 times 3 plus x equals 4. Now I'm going to distribute. Negative 3x plus 9 plus 3x equals 4. Combine like terms. Negative 3x and positive 3x cancels out. 
I'm left with 9 equals 4. That means my system has no solution. Because 9 can't equal 4. That doesn't make sense. Number 4. Again, we don't have anything by itself, but we can easily get y by itself if we subtract 2x. So I get that y equals 6 minus 2x. I'm going to take that, plug it in for the y, get negative 4x minus 2 times 6 minus 2x equals negative 12. distribute the negative 2, so minus 12 plus 4x equals negative 12. Combine like terms, again they cancel out, but we have negative 12 equals negative 12. That's a true statement, so there are infinitely many solutions. And a word problem. So, you like to drive to a specialty store to buy your favorite gourmet jelly beans for the low price of $1.30 a pound. However, your best friend points out that you're spending about $3 on gas every time you drive to that store. And that you might as well buy your jelly beans at the local supermarket for $2.10 a pound. You decide to show them that you are getting enough of those jelly beans to make the trip worth it. Let X represent the number of pounds of jelly beans. Write an equation to determine the total cost if you drive to the specialty store. So we knew that the specialty store, you're paying $1.30 a pound, but you need $3 on gas. So the cost of the jelly beans is equaling $1.30x, because $1.30 for every pound that you buy, plus the three dollars in gas. If we're driving to the local supermarket, then we're just paying two dollars and ten cents a pound. So the cost is two dollars and ten cents a pound. So I'm going to take what C equals and plug it into the other equation. Solve. I'm going to get all the x's on one side. Divide both sides by 0 0.8. And then I get that x equals 300, or sorry, 3.75. So, what this means is that it doesn't matter which store I go to, if I buy 3.75 pounds of jelly beans. And if I buy those jelly beans, then it's costing me $7.88, regardless of which store I go to. All right. Try your guide to practice. I'll see you guys in class next week.